Morning Felters and welcome. The sun is shining, it's a really lovely day today and I am, I've just stopped, I'm going across the Peak District on my way to meet Tracy from Birdie and Blossom who has agreed to let us come and see her business and see some of her creations and I get to talk needle felting so I just can't wait, let's go. <music> and welcome to this is Tracy from Birdie and Blossom who has been so kind and invited me around here today so thank you so much thank really. you what I do is I love going around to people who run businesses especially to do with needle felting obviously and just talk about you know when you started needle felting how you started your business I just find it's really good for other people to sort of inspire them and help them and I know you feel really strongly about that as well so the first question we always ask is <laughs> How did you come across needle felting and, and how long ago did you start? Okay. So um, actually I was from, um, my background is in the charity sector, my last position within marketing and I've always been into crafts and making things um, so I wanted to help raise some money for charity for the Manchester bombings, that's how right. okay. um, on the first year anniversary. So I reached out to different crafters and some of my work was included in that and then I met this lovely lady that was recommended by one of my colleagues um, called Mrs B Feltz. Oh, I have seen her name mentioned yeah, on your Instagram. Yeah, she's Instagram. lovely, Tracy. So she very kindly donated these little bees and like an angel and a hoop, and it was it was lovely. And as I was starting out my concept for Birdie and Blossom, it was to um, have all the makers involved as well as the work that I was doing so that we could really be like a destination. So I'd invited Tracy to start having a look at um, needle felting because it wasn't something she was doing it as a hobby from yeah. home like most of us start off with yeah but i could see the potential in it being something so you could see the potential in her craft yes. needle felting and you hadn't tried it yet i hadn't tried it at that time <laughs> I, i'd done little I, I had tried it before but nothing nothing that really yeah had taken but then i started doing the needle felting and the interesting thing is the very first one that I did, I thought, seriously, I, is that what we're going to do for two or three hours? <laughs> we're going to tap that needle. Um, so I thought it was a little bit of a strange concept. Um, but then there was something quite addictive and yeah. quite therapeutic about it. And, and it enabled me just to switch off because I had, a, like I say, a busy role before. And then I just wanted to make another piece. <laughs> And then I'd rush the core work and then I'd get into something different. And so it, it would just progress, but that's how I started. Yeah. And then because Tracy and I were sort of like, I suppose like craft sisters in a way, we really gelled and supported each other. And I had my strengths that I brought to it. So we worked together doing more sort of face-to-face -face, um, courses. I was supporting, I was running my own workshops and we'd bounce off each other. So I realized quite, early on that having a support network mm. and working with other needle felters and collaborations is really healthy so you, you sort of hit the road running almost it was quite good yeah. you had people around between the two of us we sort of like inspired each other and yeah. also as the numbers started to increase at that stage um we could have a month off <laughs> it was like <laughs> i need a i need a break this month could you do that next yeah. um session and it sort of bounced back and uh, yeah. and, and changed, but tr you know Tracy's a teacher, so she she has um, a full time uh, role as well, oh, um, and fitting that in. So and and this for me is my um, job. It is now your full time yeah. business, yeah. isn't it? Mm. Um, you do teach part time too, don't yes. you? For is it adults with special needs? Or? It's yeah, it's uh, young young adults and adults with uh, learning and physical um, yeah. disabilities. Um, so because I'm from a charity sector, I've always been a real 
um, I like to do work that I know is doing good or benefiting. Yeah. Somebody. So that was one of the sort of core values I recognised quite early on. And um, it was a local charity here in Standish called My Life. Um, wonderful in the way that they work with um, with young adults. Um, and I can just see the potential. Again, I think that's something I can see when I meet somebody. Um, so yeah, I do two days with them alongside, alongside, alongside this. this. I know how busy this is for yes. you. Um, so let's just explain. Yes. So you run a subscription box yes. for people to join. And should we show a box? Badger is our October project. So every month we have a project. It's wildlife inspired. Mm -hmm. um, and um, what the idea of that is, it's taking somebody from the early concept. Mm -hmm. So when we sort of say we're making a badger, I will give them suggestions. I will help them with the wire armatures. Yeah. Tracy, you make up loads of wire armatures, don't you? I do, <laughs> I do. So... I'm always fiddling with wire, yes. So if anyone is struggling, yeah. uh, you definitely make up the wire armatures for them. Yes, so anybody who joins a subscription, I make the armatures for them, unless yeah. they say that they're more confident with it. And the reason for that is it's about experience. Mm -hmm. There's no point me putting something out there that just makes somebody feel slightly deflated from the yeah. get-go because they can't get the armature right. But if they're a visual learner like I am, to be able to see the twists and the joints and the measurements, mm -hmm. and sometimes when the measurement isn't quite level, because yeah. that can happen, it's a it, tiny doesn't, bit yeah, it, doesn't, it doesn't change the end result, but it gives people confidence and yeah. they can learn from it. And you also, um, in the ones that I did, because I did six months mm. with you, um, you include extra wire so someone can yes. repeat that wire armature themselves by looking at yours. Yes. So that was yeah. really good too. Um, so the wire armature is all done and then you've got all the wools. Yes. So I do weigh the wools out and this again, I'm, I'm taking it from my experiences. You know, <laughs> I remember going to a supplier of wool and thinking, oh, I need maybe a hundred grams of that. And by <laughs> yeah, the time the boot was lot. full, because I didn't really understand what the, the it was. Yeah. And so that's important for me because somebody else who's maybe not as familiar with needle felting, if I say sort of like 10 grams for the head on that yeah. piece, you know, they have, they, they, most How households much? have scales, yeah. but I want them to understand and learn. So I'll measure the head mm -hmm. weight out of wool, yeah. I'll measure the body so that they can get straight on with it. Yeah. Yeah. Do the videos. So usually there's a series of videos, so it can be on average about seven videos. So one will just focus on like an introduction, me opening the kit, explaining the walls. They get yeah. um, a full resource, resource list, so if they want to continue and make another one yeah. afterwards. So that's really handy, isn't mm. it? Because you think, well, what wall was that? I don't know where it was from. Oh so you've got all the videos, and then on top of that, <laughs> you do a Facebook, uh, you do, what do you call them, Zooms? or I do Zooms. I, I, it's almost like a community. From my experience, the best out of needle felting is when you're working at home and you're doing it yourself and you've got that support because you've got me in the video tutorial chatting yeah. alongside so you've got a bit of company there at the house but it's nice to be able to put your piece back up in in a dedicated group which I do on Facebook it's a private group and sometimes I just sit back because I can see the yeah. ones that are getting a little bit more confident and, mm. and really um, encouraging each other um, because everybody's at different levels so I, I love that side of it so they get that and then I do a couple of um, zoom check-ins so yeah I've got one on Tuesday night which is the fox you're yeah. there they can ask you questions yeah straight away about it so there might be a question that um, you hadn't thought of yes um, to put in the video and they're just like oh yes and you know so they can ask you anything they want and meet everybody else yeah as well. they get to meet everybody else ask questions yeah. I have the camera so I can do a live demonstration mm -hmm. so if they were struggling on the ears or some, yeah. some small detail I can repeat that for them yeah um, and what I've started getting now is sometimes they'll send pictures back and ask what do you think of this so because a lot of my work is templated and designed mm -hmm. I can overlay the templates on their work as a mm -hmm. side profile piece and send it back to them yeah. so that they can have a look visually when I can see that there's more work on the underbelly of, of yeah. the wall yeah sometimes they can't because you're working with it all the time that you can't see any improvements definitely as we say sort of taking a picture yeah. coming back the next day things like that gives you a different perspective on your piece doesn't yes. it and do you also include um, some pictures and some... Yeah, there's inspiration boards. I try to encourage people to do their own inspiration boards as well. Um, but it's it's part of the research before you even start a project. It's a big sort of mm. pointer for me as part of the learning. Take the time not only to look at photography, 
but to look at videos as well with the fox one that i recently did it's just that sort of like almost listening to something in the meadow and it's yeah. turning and it's holding its paw there's a suggestion in the sculpture then which i wouldn't have got from just playing photography yeah so video photography mm -hmm. sculpture yeah anything that's painted or drawn um people have had to put that energy and time in um, so it's just absorbing yourself in all that. And so it's all included in a monthly uh, price and then people find you on Instagram and Facebook. Can yes. they just message you? They just message me and um, <laughs> at the moment the plans are to like anything when you were growing business. So for those who are just starting out on journey and have mm. dreams and aspirations to do this, it's best just to gradually um, make those improvements. So when I started, yes, I probably should have had a website from a marketing <laughs> background. It's sort of like a tick. But actually, I needed to learn. I needed to make mistakes. I needed to grow. I needed to understand all the different ways of working. So for me, that gradual progression of followers and um, makers that work with me and the retention levels are quite mm. high. And that's because... Um, there's a lot of effort that's put into it and, and we're, we're both gaining from it yeah. as, as, as a group. So you have a, a lot of repeat customers come, yeah. coming back to yeah. you month on month, so it's fantastic. Yeah, and some may take a break and there's pauses in the subscription, which yeah. is fine. But I'm getting to the part now where overseas makers are getting involved, which is amazing. It's still, it's still great when you get on Zoom and you've got people still like, <laughs> it's night time and all, all chatting <laughs> yeah. away. It's, it's lovely. Um, so it will become easier next year, but I'm eight months into doing the subscription and I've always been doing the way I teach, mm -hmm. but to a smaller, more local number of makers. And the, yeah. the step change has been actually, what if I took it out of being local and moved it online? Online. So. And it's proving very, yes, very popular. So it's fantastic. I was going to sort of ask, because social media these days is so important. Instagram, you have to have over 50,000 followers. Do. You happen to have reels that have over 220,000 views. Yes. Um, and Facebook, you've got over 3,000 people following mm. you. So for the social media you do use, you do fantastic, because Instagram is a very difficult one to build up yes. to that level. So um, how do you find social media? Do you find it easy to do, or is it just a necessity? It's a little bit of both. Um, I've tried to, when I started out, I was more with Facebook. So when I was doing in-person local uh, workshops, Facebook is a better platform mm -hmm. to get your bookings and, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. So I suppose Instagram at that time was more of a da da piece, here's the piece I've made, da da shots, where a lot of people were doing that. And then the reels came into it, which can be quite difficult and some maybe overwhelming for some people mm. but I just started looking at it quite differently because when I'm sat in this craft room and I'm making things and I'm bending the wires and I'm making the walls and I'm putting the detail in the eye the stuff that I'm seeing it's almost like little snippets of magic um, that you don't get in you know, just a final shot so yeah. that was the idea of actually it's like start showing what happens behind the scenes so that they can appreciate the final picture yeah, and piece absolutely. but understand the work that goes into it and then you just edit li little sections um, so it changed a little bit more because I started enjoying more Instagram then yeah. so I do enjoy doing the videos and reels but it's important to go back and have a look at your insight as well within those platforms and see what works well because you yeah. can have a great video that you think this is going to take well and it actually sometimes doesn't and ones that were okay or you were happy with surprise you and do particularly know, well you, you're just trying to work yeah. out why isn't it yeah. are there any other social media platforms that you I are do thinking have about i have tiktok do you i did that over lockdown and my daughter was horrified because i think she thought <laughs> i was going to start doing all these dances i was like absolutely not but again, I'm making life easier for myself because, and I'm not giving myself a hard time. As I said, I'm from a marketing background. So ideally, the way you'd produce content for mm. each of the platforms would be slightly differently. I haven't got time for that. And so <laughs> I just sort of say, I, I know what I should be doing and I'm going against what I should be doing sometimes because I want to keep it authentic and real and I haven't got time yeah. and I'm busy That's and I've got two teenagers. And in that mix, it, you can spend too much time with the social media and mm. not actually focus on growing your business or being creative yeah. it's a balance yeah, between the absolutely. two so i just usually have one piece of content and put it across them um and that's interesting to see what tiktok like yeah and their audience which is which is a different sort of demographics to 
to Instagram. I think you, uh, from what we've heard, you're from a creative background. You've been quite creative. Yes. Um, you studied uh, photography, illustration, graphic designs at yes. college, and then you went on to do graphic designs at university, and you ended up in marketing. Yes. But you're creative with other, um, not hobbies, but what other sort of creative things have I think, you done? I think I can put, put, my, put myself to lots of things. So I do illustrate. So when I was at uh, university doing graphic design that had a marketing element and branding, um, a lot of the work I was doing was illustration led, mm -hmm. and I was actually suggested that I should do children's illustration. Oh, but I never took that advice on board. <laughs> um, yeah, and so, uh, but those those sort of recommendations have never left me. So I've always had an interest in art and stuff. So mm. with the charity, I can really explore that yeah. and um, help do fine art. Lots of different. Yeah, and we do sculpture groups. and we make amazing uh, pieces out of cardboard, masking tape and bubble wrap. Who, who'd have thought that those three things can make some fantastic pieces? And I do have to say, because you got some of your pieces into the Manchester Home Open exhibition, yes. so that was your well, Mr. Bear. Yes, the bear. The mm. bear who's just here, who um, I've got some nice close-up footage. His coat is astonishing. But some of your students got some pieces in as well. They did, because when I was started working with the charity and you spend a little bit of time with them, you realise um, that they have got such a strong creative mindset and also there's there's no boundaries there's nothing that they won't do mm. so I worked with them in individuals there was three that sort of stood out um and i spent a bit of time and i said look how about we do something <laughs> and we just enter some pieces so they all got a bit giddy excited nervous didn't want to do I it i would get nervous putting yeah something. so it was and, and and that's what we did we put them in and then somebody told me afterwards it was quite prestigious and it might be difficult so i had to manage expectations but all three got through that's incredible, incredible. Mm -hmm. absolutely incredible yeah. and that the end of the year so we all went for january and they brought the the family members and for them like most of us we, you know i've mentioned this before we all have ups and downs yeah. journeys and um, those members um, and people that have those disabilities, um, it, you know, life is challenging. And so to have something that really gave them that confidence and focus and attention was for me, I suppose, the biggest joy that I've had whilst and, I've been and doing it. gets thousands of visitors. Thousands. Yeah, it does. So it, it's, it, it's astonishing. It does. And a couple of those have said, you know, somebody else has asked me to do a piece and I've oh, said I might yeah. charge them. You yeah. know, it's twenty pound too much to ask. And I'm like, well, oh, you should charge and a bit it more. Starts. But it starts for them, yeah. and um, I'm a big believer in trying to sort of help the charity yeah. to, you know, get prints, let's say, from some of those pieces and raise funds, and it goes back into the charity. And then you said you're able to buy more yes. art supplies yes. to do different things to, do... to keep going. Yes. So. so, so I'm always wanting to keep inspired by other crafts and other things because I can bring that in through the charity yeah. channel but my focus is um yeah woolly animals <laughs> <laughs> we touched on it briefly I'm going to ask you in a bit all the fun stuff about your favorite needle and wolves and stuff like that everything we all want to know but um this is a question as well for a, a lot of people starting a business pricing yes now so obviously you sold your felts at a certain point because mm -hmm. obviously yeah. doing the subscription boxes you're not selling them so much at the moment but how did you tackle pricing and uh, did you find it very difficult um yes is the answer to that <laughs> um because everybody will struggle with it because yeah. um i think the challenge is with needle felting everybody can make a piece of needle felted artwork but it depends on the value you can also send this spend the same time yeah. on that piece with different outcomes and results mm. dependent on experience so therefore a piece that might be two three hundred pounds mm. versus one that might be 80 pounds the more experience you have you would understand that yeah but not everybody has that appreciation so you know um i've often you know my mum's a crafter and I've sat many times in my younger years learning from her and sat behind the stall and just seeing oh, the deflation so she at used times. To sell oh, she used to sell not needle hub but other pieces. Other pieces, yeah. And then she her prices were always quite low. Yeah. And they would still walk by or or not want to buy. And mm -hmm. I could see that deflation at times in her. And I used to sort of encourage her by saying, they're just not your customer mum. Mm. They just don't appreciate that piece. And so when they walk away, it's not the right thing for you. Yeah. Just carry on. Yeah. And um, and I think with needle felters, that's what I would encourage people to do. 
is if somebody comes and says, oh, I can make that or I could do that and I, I, I wouldn't charge that much. You've just got to be confident in what you mm. believe the, 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 the range is. But there has to be some level of experience, I think, behind the make before you can start charging yeah, the higher price. Absolutely. Piece. Yeah. And in the beginning, everybody just, they really want to sell yes. their pieces, don't they? Yeah. Um, and I think it's a very personal thing, pricing. It is, because there's certain levels that... You know, I've had discussions with other, other felters where you can say, crikey, I, I could never charge that much. Well, maybe you couldn't at that point in your journey, yeah. but further down the line, maybe you could. And, and one of the best instances I had, it was an overseas commission that I had, and I really wanted to make the commission because it was a beautiful piece. But truthfully, I hadn't got the time. Um, and for me to stop what I was doing was quite a big ask. Yeah. And it, that was the one time I thought, if I'm going to do it, I have to do it, not at the level where it just covers yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah, I have to, to be, reward I have to make something properly. Yeah, so I, I gave a price because and I just thought I'm going to put that price out there because mm -hmm. if I don't get it, then that's completely fine because I haven't got time yeah. for it anyway, really. Um, and I did put the price out and they accepted that um, straight away. Um, and again, that gave me a little bit of confidence. So it's a good way at times when you're not quite sure of that leap mm -hmm. is every so often just test Mm -hmm. that next step level That's right. um, and see what happens and what comes back from that because there's it, you don't want to undersell yourself no but then like i said there's a different there's a difference isn't there in pricing i think it's a, it definitely is a confidence thing yes. isn't it and once you've had that confidence once or twice when people prepare to pay yeah that's fantastic. And I think what happens with the subscription box now, I'm quite confident with the price points that I've um, started with. Um, people are selling them for that price and above when they've made the piece. Yeah. So it almost pays for itself. So it's quite a nice hobby that they're learning from and selling it. And then they come and celebrate that on the call and go, oh, I sold that little piece. And I'm like, yay. You know, fantastic. And the fact that they've been able to, you know, con you know, yeah, get, get another project back, in. Learn, Love it. Carrying on. So you know, that's that's the joy of it. Works really well. Um, the other thing, we have a picture of it. I'm going to put a picture on mm. the screen. What was your very first felt? My very first felt was a fox. And <laughs> interesting enough, we're doing the fox this month as, um, as, as a project. So I'm going to dig that photograph out and, and show it within the community Excellent. group. Just to sort of show them that that's the journey. Yeah. And for me, the biggest message is it's not about perfection. It's not about thinking, oh, yours looks better than mine, which is what we all do anyway in life yeah. generally. Um, it's just about focusing on your progression. So when did you start? How many years ago was it? Do you remember? Um, it was probably about 2019. So not that long ago. No, not that long ago. That's fantastic. How did you start in the beginning? Was it all self -taught? So when I started, we, I, I touched on it a, a little bit earlier. It was a charity event and mm -hmm. meeting somebody that introduced me to yeah. it. I was puzzled by this strange concept <laughs> of tapping wool and making yeah. things. And then I wanted to learn more. And then everything else that I had in my plans to make was just not getting made because I wanted to make, well, clearly I need to make that little squirrel or it just never, it's endless, isn't yeah. it? The fun that you can have with it. Um, so a lot of it was being self-taught and, um, and I had that initial introduction um, with a, with, with a really good friend um, of mine, Mrs. V Phelps. Yeah. But like anything, I've come from a business background in marketing. So in business, you always invest in your learning and development. So I think it's really important as needle felters to take the time and um, work with other people as well. And you have worked with? I have worked with Michaela Bartlett. I went on yeah. the very first workshop, which I was really super excited about. One, because I'm behind the camera all the time. I'm teaching, I'm thinking. And it was just after we were coming out of the lockdown period um, and I was pretty exhausted, like most of us were from that. And I just wanted the thought of just switching off and doing what I love and disconnecting from social media and just having quality time with somebody of her experience who, for me, it was, you know, is yeah. by far the best, yeah. in my she, opinion, she is needle felter. She is truly inspirational. She is. She? Yeah. And she's equally just so, um, such a lovely person as well. Mm. Um, and her sharing her skills, so it was a, a, a privilege to be with her. I didn't spend that much time because it was like a four-day session. Yeah. There was lots of people on the course with different abilities. But just to be in the, her presence, in a way, <laughs> on those small and, and little to, pieces that she showed you was just... To see them up close, probably, yeah. would be, for me, yeah. fascinating. And, and, and the difference that I noticed, like, her core work is quite soft. 
okay. in comparison to my core work where I'm quite a firm felter yeah. on yeah. the sculptural side of things. And that fascinated me, <laughs> really fascinated me. Yeah, um, that's a big a big question again yeah. is how firm do you felt your felt? What's, it's not wrong or right in my no. view. What do you sort of feel? I'm more of a firm felter, yeah. but that experience I suppose showed me how you can have a more softer core finish mm -hmm. And then start to apply your colours then that sort of sculpt it together. So I'm probably sit a little bit in between mm -hmm. now. I like to have, uh, if I'm working with armatures, the centres really sort of strong because it is the core. And mm -hmm. then you're applying pillows of wool to build up the sculpture and, and structure before applying them. I think your armatures are, um, the ones that I received are absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so oh, well you. done. So anyone who does go for the subscription boxes, the armatures are fascinating. Yes. And you wrap a wire around the wire so tightly. Yes. So is that your graphic sort of design coming in? I don't know. I, I just like ma making and moving <laughs> things. So I think wire just feels like that, that sort of twiddling of things. So I, I, I quite like looking at photographs, for example, and working out the dimensions mm. of... Um, the, the sort of skeleton shape yeah. and simplifying it to a way where I can put a pattern and measurements um, that then can translate where you get a design template and I will make you one of the um, um, armatures if, if that's yeah. helpful for and you. And they were easy to wrap wool around. It yes. wasn't tricky as well because some armatures can be very fiddly. Yes. So they're not fiddly. So I know you've been on the Michaela Bartlett course. Yeah. Have you been on any other courses? Yes, I went on Kiyosho Mino. I'm not so, exact on the pronunciation, <laughs> but he was um, he was doing a course of he come from America. Yeah. He was with the makers and that was another one where it was my first sort of dive into stepping out of doing a face to face delivery myself yeah. and, and just being on the other side of the table and enjoying it. So, so you good. have invested in your teaching because I think yes you know that that must have been a fantastic course and the Michaela Bartlett did you do was it a kingfisher on that one we did a kingfisher um and again different styles so the you know having worked with the two of them they're very very different Hello. um so I do remember the way he sort of played with the wool was just fascinating and, and sort of like sort of longer I don't know just very gentle really? strokes of how he yeah. held the wool and he, he just made it look yeah, it, it, it was stunning to watch him. Um, it was stunning to watch him. And again, I met um, some amazing needle felt yeah. well that have gone on and, and they've got businesses. So I think my recommendation would be it's about having a mixture. It's about understanding when you're teaching the different learning styles. Some are very visual. Mm. Some want to have that real face to face contact with you. Um, so, so the more experience that you get and actually it builds your confidence, I think, because when you have. I used to look at needle felters online and think, wow, I could never get to that level. A lot of We've people all done say it, that, we? don't they? I, I never, never do that. that. And then you'll surprise yourself because it is, it's practice yeah. makes progress. Yeah. It's not about perfection, it makes progress. But then you get to a place and you start working with it and you think, actually, I'm not too far off. I'm getting there. I can, I'm, do, I'm, that. I can yeah. do it. And anything that gives you confidence and encourages you. Mm. And I think within the needle felting community, from my experience, such lovely people i mean they are like minded people because <laughs> we like woolly woolly yeah. things but um just really encouraging yeah so when i did really well you've mentioned about sort of like um the videos and the reels that i've done on instagram michaela had got in touch and congratulated me on that did she? so for me to have her is like the aspiration <laughs> and for her to sort of share that yeah acknowledgement and congratulating me yeah. it's just lovely and that's happened with, with with others so i think we're all in it together we should all absolutely support each other um so now the sort of the fun questions we like yeah. to ask what's your favorite needle to use Ooh. obviously probably you know we use the 36 or a 38 to start off but mm. What about finishing and smoothing? I think my favourite is the 40 twisted, the light Me blue. Too. <laughs> yeah, that is my favourite. And I'm gonna I am going to have a, an experiment with some other needle because you can become sort of comfortable and you stay within your comfort zone. So mm. and the other thing just to say with needles, when I first started I couldn't tell, you know, it's helpful to have the little colour coded ones, mm. especially when you're teaching. But now I've got to a point where I can tell what the needle is when you'll do the it's same the when feel. you feel of it. Yeah. And I know instinctively, even though I think, oh, I should still be using sort of the core yeah. wool needles, 
I instinctively go to the pale blue one yeah. because I get that it, it's, it's not going in yeah. the needle's not working it's not doing yeah. anything so look so how that feels for me when I'm needle felt it might be different from yourself mm. or another needle felt so I don't think there's any right or wrong either. and the other thing is any multi-needle tool holders I'm just having a look back that you particularly like so I didn't used to like them I quite I, I tested when I first started using them I went back to the thing because I think there's something really more creative about a single needle and the fact that you have to every time you push into yeah. the wall you you yeah. know it just it's something magical about it however as i've progressed um i have had the uh, the pen the clover yeah. pen yeah um so i really like that one where it's mm -hmm. got the uh, three needles and mm -hmm. close proximity um so that's really good for say the barn owl wings and and the finishing of the barn owl that yeah. i did i use that quite a lot and i appreciated that needle more not necessarily with the plastic feel of it necessarily mm. but but the needles worked well in that tool i've got the wooden ones that have the four yeah that are more separated mm -hmm. as well mm. slightly lethal yeah, yeah. don't <laughs> watch yeah. tv ever. yeah yes be very those. careful with that one but again if you're flattening a piece and you're using one of the brush pads you you can get a good attachment where mm. your hands nowhere near it yeah and it's just you know, something quite therapeutic if you've had a, a bit of a tough day <laughs> that's the tool i think it's sort get of it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a good one absolutely um and mats have you got a favorite mat? fantabulous the woolly stab mat and i've got that in two sizes like an a5 mm -hmm. and an, a, an a4 size i like these ones yeah. really good quality um, they do pick up a lot of fibers from them yeah. so i do have covers that go over the top okay and especially if you're working with black wools yeah. this is going to be all white black and white yes. oh, yeah um and how long have you had that mat would you say Ooh, a good over a 12 month period yeah over a 12 i found month. mine's lasted really well so yeah. i think they're absolutely fantastic so yeah they will, they will be good i also like the smaller one because my kids are in sports and i'm on, uh, when i'm on the sports run yeah i have i'm the strange mum that sits in the corner <laughs> with a cup of tea Stopping <laughs> making little woolly animals, but it's great because it's it's felt in on you know mobile. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then the other thing is your wools. Now I know you use world world of wool because I can see yeah. from this absolutely stunning cabinet that we have here. Oh. When did you get that recently? I, tre I treated myself in January after Christmas, so I had, I got I had some Christmas money, and I thought, do you know what? I am fed up of going through the boxes <laughs> and there was one the day that nearly tipped me over the edge because it was one colour yeah. and it was the bottom box and it, and it looked like I'd, you know, I'd been burgled basically in this yeah. front room <laughs> just to get this one piece and then I thought it's about solving problems isn't it? That used to give me quite an anxiety. Really? Feeling like, oh, I've got to pull everything out yeah. before I can get in a creative good space to start making. So I was already et up before I started making because I'd had to fight for the wool. Um, and then I love vintage, anything vintage, old. I can see we've got an old phone yes. there. We've got um, all the spindles that everything's on. Yeah. That's just beautiful, really sets them off. But, yeah. So you. Uh, so I found this one. I was watching one of the TV shows and it was on, and me and my husband sort of said, Oh, that'd be good for your haberdashery for your wools. So I, really ser I searched. Perfect. I think I landed lucky because I got it on eBay. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, at a fraction of the price. It's that I should have beyond done. perfect because you can see all the colours. Yes. They slide out, don't they? There's little drawers. So yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of very jealous people watching <laughs> this. So that's oh. a vintage haberdashery, is that what you Vintage mean? haberdashery. I love vintage, I love handmade, so if you put those two together, it's always a winning combination. Mm -hmm. But visually, I can see the colours that I've got, and I can, I'm familiar with where they are now, so I can see the slightly differences um, of tones, but also suppliers as well. Mm -hmm. And I do have makers that come in at, uh, and, and raid it as well. Oh, do they? So if you're local, <laughs> just let me know. What can you see? Have you got? Yeah. <laughs> Pop round. And what other sort of suppliers do you recommend? I know you're U we're UK based. Yeah, but. UK based. So I like um, Norwegian wool. Yeah. Um, I think the owners are really great. They're a family run business. I think the service is exceptional. I placed it on it. In fact, it's come this morning oh, from them. Oh, exciting. And um, I only ordered it a couple of days ago. I got yeah. a phone call yesterday just to check it, and then it's here. Uh, with a couple of little samples so yeah. i like the uh, the bergschaft um yeah. wool that they have um so that was in the most well some of the kits that i did yes and it's just a perfect blend it for is. some of the animals isn't it's, it it's a beautiful blend and it's quite coarse as well so mm. when you're using it you, you're not quite sure but the more that you needle felt and using the clover mm. pen that i've said you get such a lovely finish mm. and for me all my barn owls will always be with that wool yeah. i've noticed with um your work 
that you do uh, absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. You do birds, you do animals, you do everything across the board, whereas quite often you get makers that just do a, a couple of species or um, like I don't like doing birds that much. But you do everything. How do you get inspired? Do you do any drawings of them? I do drawings. I like, like I say, I like photography. I like things that I see and I have an appreciation for. And then I'll take time. So when it comes to, you know, like thinking about, say, the otter, we, we did a swimming otter. Yeah. I mean, it's such an amazing, fast moving um, animal. So, and the curls that it does and the sort of different directions. Um, I love all that side of things. So then what I tend to do, I have a little sketchbook. Um, and I, I did this at the beginning of the year, but I thought, well, Absolutely. I'll do a little sketch yeah, sure. for each of the subscriptions yeah. just so I can get myself into that thought process at the start. So if I know I'm making something three, four months ahead, yeah. I will start sketching little ideas. So I've they got, so they're not all in here, but I've got the uh, the brown bear, which oh, ended yeah. up being the walking bear yeah. um, rather than a seated, seated, seated bear, uh, swimming otter, so the great movements and directions but I like that sort of like downwards dive yeah um so and again these are things as part of the subscription that I will start sharing early mm -hmm. and then they tell me which they want to make this yeah. is your polar bear who he's a vintage polar bear yeah jointed wearing ice skates <laughs> he's he was a he was a fun project to do this is the time I was doing um face-to-face -face workshops and uh, working with other makers. So a lady who lives just down the road is brilliant at crochet. So she made oh, me fantastic. these little scarves. <laughs> it's like being a winter project. And I love the idea of that jointed vintage burr. Yeah. Um, so that's how he was going to be just a vintage burr until I went into a shop and saw these amazing decorations, <laughs> which were ice boots. So of course I had to clear the whole, whole rail. I was like, <laughs> I know so many people who want those. And it was a case of adding those to him. So he's a skating bird, but because of the joints, you can have real fun. He can be sort of like in a speed <laughs> position if you wanted him to. I'd need to tighten up the um, um joints, the joints yeah. because of the, they are quite weighty. And it just makes you think more about presentation. And I think that's part of the teaching now that I do is when you think of a project, what's the story behind your mm -hmm. piece that you're making? How do you want it presented? So this one would be fabulous on like a little wooden circle dish that you yeah. can get where you can make that Absolutely. ice effect whether you're putting fabrics or paper wallpapers or resins down so he's yeah he's he's good fun I um, love so him. i have something and so as i said uh, before you have made a lot of birds um you made a peregrine falcon falcon yes. as well yes was that was a stunning. commission <laughs> um you make a lot of owls the kingfishers um the owls in particular, um, have you had them as a subscription box yet? I can't remember. I've run this, not as a subscription, I've run this as individual a courses. So course. every so yeah. often I will do a course that's over like three weekends, possibly mm -hmm. four, because we intend to get friendly over the three weeks and want to get together just to show our final one. Um, and I'll tend to do the barn owl, they which are is quite absolutely stunning. Do you uh, do you have an affinity with birds? Do you like birds doing them a lot? Because I do. I I, yeah, I do love birds. Um, obviously it's helpful because that's I'm called Birdie and Blossom. So yeah, I was gonna ask, how did you get the name Birdie and Blossom? Yeah, Birdie and Blossom. It's it's a funny thing. My dad used to breed birds all the time. So from being young, we were the family where you get knocked at the door if any birds were injured. My dad had oh. the little incubators and things like that for them. So we could we could try and nurse them back so I've always been handling them and stuff so I think when I'm making it and it gets to a certain point in the make I do feel it <laughs> I do have those memories of yeah. sort of holding and being a bit more oh. gentle with the piece um so I've had an affinity with birds all the time and then friends have always called me like from where I'm, I, I'm from originally Chorley which is not too far from here but it's like Chorley bird birds always sort of been in a, a description so birdie and blossom just came about of being thinking about birds sort of flying high, being, you know, driven and passionate about something and going for, you know, yeah. your dreams and goals. And Blossom was more about nurturing ideas, um, encouraging others to learn. So yeah. the two of them together, I suppose, is like Worked a representation really well. of me as Birdie and Blossom is where I'm sharing oh, felt in magic. It's very <laughs> men memorable name as yeah. well, so it's yeah. really good. I love this one because he, he was just so joyful. So this was a project that was just for me. But then, of course, as soon as you start showing pictures, yes. is it a course? Can I do it? Yeah. Well, I liked him and he, his time, he was 
great timing because as we were coming into lockdown, I was getting lots of questions. Are we doing the workshops again? I could get in to check whether the coast was clear. <laughs> Yes, it's so funny. we're back out there. We're safe to this go again. This is gorgeous, though. Oh. It's absolutely beautiful, and and it's quite simplified. Is yeah. you know, it's not realistic in the way that it's done. It's just a little bit of fun. Yeah. But there was some detail here with the leaves and yeah. the little ferns, um, and so it's, and adding moss and um, a little bit of embroidery. So there's all sorts you can do. So that was just your bit. That of was fun. just me fun. But what it did is it re-energized me mm. then. So this will or is in the plans to be like a series so you could have lots of different animals that are popping up so it might be a little her that's popping up in different things <laughs> and there'd be a collection Absolutely. but I just haven't done that yet brilliant. Um, do you know when to stop on a piece or do you have to sort of do you keep going back to it um, like? I think I'm quite good at knowing when to stop I think what I try to tell people to do is walk away from your project mm. as many times as you can and come back with it as with a fresh pair of eyes. Yeah. Because if you're not sure whether you should stop, if you're not sure whether you need to add any more, um, that's the time when you're unsure to walk away. Because when you come back, you'll you'll see it with a different pair of, of eyes really mm -hmm. and think, no, I need, oh, yeah. I, 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 I need to add that bit. Mm -hmm. And the biggest lesson I've had is where something's niddled me on the piece and I thought, I'll just, I'll just, it'll be fine. I'll yeah. cover it up. By the time it gets to the project, that middle's always there. <laughs> so you see need it. to deal with it. If you see yeah. it and you're not happy with it, then rather than progressing, just stop and be brave. And if I you know. have to take that piece off or amend it slightly. I it's, have yeah. literally got scissors. Yeah. You, uh, you just look at it and look at it and you're like, no, just get the scissors out. Yeah. Come on, we've got to do this. Yeah. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. I, I had a commission once quite early in the thing and it was for a wedding and it was these, for these little mice. So clearly I know what mice look like. <laughs> I'm going for this project. So I did, I, I went for it and the, the kids came home and my husband and uh, they were like, oh, that's looking really good. Is it, is it, um, I don't get is, is it a her? And I went, no, it's a, it's no, a it's mouse. <laughs> and clearly, you know, I, I looked at it and thought, well, I think they're being a little bit harsh. So <laughs> yeah. the next day I came, <laughs> came back to it the next day and I was like, what was I thinking? It was like <laughs> a Hulk mouse. It was huge. So I did end up changing that. Yeah. And that's a lesson. When you get things wrong, that's just as important, if not more important, to get things wrong because you learn the most from that. So my <laughs> lesson in that was I should have done the research instead of getting too giddy and going yeah. for it. And also, because I'd spent so much time on it, it was simple then to change it mm. and make some amends to it so that it could become a really beautiful Easter bunny, which it was, and I sold the <laughs> Easter bunny, but it was intended to be a little tiny one. <laughs> oh, mouse. well. <laughs> but the mice I did eventually make one oh, I, I do find family can be the most honest sometimes. Yes, too honest. <laughs> And there's someone else in the room mm -hmm. you might felt at some point. <laughs> there is. There's Duke. He's my uh, border collie. He's absolutely adorable. But as we're chatting away, he just wants to be... He likes company. So he <laughs> comes in and he, you can he often hear him sometimes in the background of my videos. Yeah. So people are used to, oh, Duke's in the room That's while she's teaching. And are you in his chair right now? I am. Well, this, <laughs> this is, again, because I love vintage. This was yeah. a sort of an old rescued uh, chair that we had reupholstered. Probably needs doing again. But Duke's often on here. So for me coming in the house um, and I see him with his big paws and his, his sort of head looking over, it's it's such a joy and it makes me feel like I am at home. So yeah. I that this is one of my pieces I'm going to make, the oh. actual uh, chair itself, little wooden legs, have it all proportioned oh, and, and have Duke in there. That'll be amazing. Yeah. I look forward to that mm -hmm. one. And if someone's just about to start needle felting, have you got any advice for, I mean, patience is a virtue yes 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 um anything else if they were about to start how would you recommend they start By i would yeah or... i would say spend some time and get the right equipment yeah because when i started out i made lots of mistakes that's mm -hmm. probably why i feel like i've I, I can teach better now because of that um, because I didn't know what the right wool was. What's the best core wool? Mm -hmm. My core wool might, choice might be slightly different to yours. Yeah. What are the needles that I should be using? What mm -hmm. are the pads? Should I introduce wax? What wax do I use? Where yeah. do I buy that from? Yeah. And I think the felting community, usually online and on Instagram, are, are very generous with sharing um, the wax. Um, Mum's Maker is fantastic. Yeah. So I would always use those. And I will show and pass that as a, as a brand on. So learn about your tools to start with. Yeah. If you're going to get a kit, it's about quality again. Yeah. You can get a kit 
lots of people have them at Christmases uh, as presents because they're into crafts. But then it's left, there's a lot of presumptions sometimes mm -hmm. with kits that you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And actually you've got some wool and needle that you're not quite sure. So you just almost dismiss that as a craft because it I yeah. was no good at it. Because and it wasn't explained properly. Because it wasn't explained. Yeah. And so for well, the wool was difficult. Yeah, or... yeah, or, yeah. the quality of the wool or, you know, or your needle felt into polystyrene. Yeah. Um, there's all these different things that sort of don't give you the true magic of, of yeah. needle felting where if you get with the right people and they share all those mm. you know all the steps um you can you can become quite a you know a, yeah. a strong confident needle felter so. in a short period of time i definitely think so definitely and you've had on your course people that haven't been felting that long on yes. your subscription boxes yes so, so because you're leading them through it yeah so the a lady recently um from the lake district has joined i think she's been doing it about four or five weeks was a bit nervous mm -hmm. and she joined mid mid through the projects and the next one we were making was the little owl and the little owl is all blending it's, yeah. it's, there's quite a lot of technique on mm -hmm. that um and i'm not a big believer in sort of saying hi i'm a beginner or mm -hmm. i think i might be intermediate or i might yeah i don't necessarily like the labels because i do believe that pushing yourself out you're going to get a, a great result mm -hmm. and you'll learn it might not be the best piece you've made but yeah. you'll learn a lot from it so one of the things that's important to me and that's how i'm trying to judge it I, if i was on somebody's workshop what would i want it to feel like and how, what would i want to learn so when it comes to armature work, this is the project we're doing. We're doing the, uh, the sort of sitting fox. But I appreciate yeah, some people will want to learn how to do it in a standing position. And they'll mm -hmm. ask me that. So rather than me just sort of like share a little bit of information, I'm doing the work for the armature for this. So I will always set a little bit extra and give them a complimentary bonus. Mm -hmm. So they have the template to make that. So if they've enjoyed the fox, which some of them will love, yep. they can then mix Go between on. the two. Yeah, and make the fox standing. Yeah. And so it's a little bit more work for me, yes. Mm -hmm. Um but the benefits to the makers and their ability to improve is more important. Yeah. So that's what I would focus on. So that's one piece. And then I've I've done that on a quite a few we've mentioned about the chip chipmunk. Um, the nice. chipmunk that I'd done and um, the chipmunk armature became a squirrel so nobody would have thought about changing it to be that um, that was one of the ones I did the, yeah and, and when you said oh right at this stage now this could be a squirrel and you're like oh yeah. yes it's not yeah. fantastic so that's what I want it I want it to energize you and think oh, mm. I could how could I do that differently so mm. it's a little bit like with the badger for example this is the one that we're working on next month and um, I've got the armatures ready for that. But mm -hmm. the wools and the way that it can be made could be quite easily turned into a raccoon. Perfect. So it will be the same wools. Yeah, um, that's there's incredible. There's a slight yeah. difference in the armature just in the length mm -hmm. potentially or strengthening of the legs on the back legs of this. But why would I not share yeah. that with people rather than... And, and from a business point of view, I'll probably be getting shouted at yeah. people saying you should just do them as two separate courses. But that's not what it's about. I'm not. Yeah. That's not what it's about to me. It's about getting people to think and take the learning from me and come back with something different. So amazing. They so easily, like you say, even being the same wolves. Yes, it's the same wolves. There's yeah. just a slight difference in the darker tones here yeah. for the badger than the uh, the raccoon. The, the yeah. raccoon. So that's that's Fair one. Lovely. And, and then, then what's coming up? Then when we get to November, we I was going to do a robin. I was going to make the robin move. Mm -hmm. um, but because they've been doing so well, <laughs> well on the course, I'm like, crikey, I think I need something a bit bigger. So I put it to the vault and I put a suggestion to them and it mm -hmm. came back and we're all going to make a reindeer. Okay. So I haven't got the reindeer to show you, unfortunately, today, which was one of the plans. But I have got the stag. Now, it's not going to be the stag because this, this was about either, three, yeah. three weeks of like working on this piece. But it will be slightly smaller. Yeah. But you can see from the structure and the armature of this um, um, that, that it's going to be a beautiful piece, yeah. basically. Um, and they have the option then of trimming that up. So if they want to put all the detail in and the, the sort of leather straps onto um, onto the reindeer, then they can oh, do that wow. as well. So I'm looking forward to that. That's going to start and next week. the bear's going to be... And the bear, again, because it's such a lovely piece and it's an all-round piece, um, I just want to Christmas it this up a bit more so he's going to potentially have all the parcels yeah that he'll be holding but there's this hobby this is why people may think i'm strange 
this is a cocktail stick, <laughs> but it's a fancy cocktail stick. So when I was at that party, they were being saved. So I've got a few of these sticks, but I quite liked it because I could Beautiful. see yeah. how the fancy cocktail stick could then become like a little hobby, hobby horse, horse toy. So um, yeah, some of the makers will be making little um, additions wow. and toys that so he's going to be the, adding. The next ones coming So out. yeah, so the next ones are yeah mainly badger, reindeer and the Christmas bird. Excellent. And then it all begins next year. Excellent. All fun. Wow, it's fantastic. Um, I've learned so much. I love coming. Thank you so much for letting me invade <laughs> and come round. Oh, it's been lovely. Um, it's yeah. just absolutely fantastic. So you're going to get the needle felting addict badge because oh, wow. you probably are a needle felting I am. addict. I am. <laughs> so you can wear that with pride. Oh, that's there really kind. So thank love, you, you so much. I've had a lovely time. So oh. I'm sure the viewers, if they have any questions, I'll put them in the comments below. But thank you for letting us come round. Oh no, you're very welcome. Thank Anytime. You. Thank you. <laughs> There we go, Felters. That was Tracy from Birdie and Blossom, who was so lovely, and I had a really, really wonderful day. Now, I did actually cut some of that down. I, I really had to leave quite a lot in because it was so good and so useful that I didn't want you to be restricted on it. But there's going to be a slightly longer version on my podcast, which I will link in the description below. I will also link all of Tracy's um, business information in, in the description below too, so do go and have a look. I did six months with her, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish I could do longer. I think I might pop back in again and join for another couple. Um, I am going to be doing some more interviews over the next few months. Here's my interview with Needlebugs if you fancy having a watch of that. And that's it for now. Please subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care everybody and see you again soon.